Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Youth Matters, a show looking at local, global and national issues affecting the youth of today. In recent months, the headlines have been dominated by cryptocurrency. It seems as though this is an opportunity where investors are claiming a return on investment guaranteed. But is that the case? It, it almost sounds too good to be true. Um, like any other online trading uh, marketplace, uh, cryptocurrency has also received a lot of negative press. And our discussion today is around the ethical and financial risks associated with cryptocurrency and online trading in general. And also looking at the opportunities, living in a digital world that we do, the opportunities that online trading and digital currency prov uh, provides us in terms of moving forward as a community. As we have a cryptocurrency, we have a discussion about the cryptocurrency. We have a cryptocurrency, we have a internet, we have a cryptocurrency, we have a currency. So, we have a cryptocurrency, we have a invest in the cryptocurrency. So, we have a cryptocurrency discussion about the cryptocurrency. And we have a cryptocurrency, we have a cryptocurrency, we have a cryptocurrency, we have a cryptocurrency. So, Alhamdulillah, our guests are in the cryptocurrency discussion. Our guests provide very different uh, perspectives and experiences to do with uh, online trading. And uh, we look forward to obviously hearing their views. Um, I'm delighted to invite and uh, welcome, first of all, uh, Mujibul Islam, who's a teacher and a cryptocurrency uh, investor. I'm also delighted to invite uh, and welcome Ashraf uh, Ibrahim, who's a business analyst and also a cryptocurrency investor. And lastly, I'm delighted to uh, welcome Salman Badr Al Hassan, Sheikh, uh, Islamic finance lawyer and Sharia scholar. So thank you all for coming on the show. As always, this show is live on Facebook, so if you're out and about, you don't have to miss it. Do share it with your relatives, your friends, your family. And as always, this is a show that involves you, the public, and we want to hear your views. Whether you're investing in cryptocurrency or any type of online trading, please get in touch. Tell us what your views are. Ikta show ilo afnara show. So afnara zudin ikta cryptocurrency maz involved us so in online trading, koron gold trading, stock shares as se. The afnara tell me kore amra khok afnara kita view ikta loya. Ita tikas se ni na kita mani zeze khora afnara kita experiences huncho in zanoi. Okay. Um, I'll start with you first, Mujibu. Okay. Um, online trading. Um, how long have you been doing this, and what's been your experiences so far? It's, it's not been a very long time actually. I started this uh, just at the end of last year, so probably September, August, September 2017. Um, I actually discovered um, cryptocurrency or Bitcoin in particular um, a number of years ago, about five, six years ago, where a friend of mine, he was actually mining Bitcoins on his computer. And at the time I, I heard what he had to say, I found it quite interesting. And I didn't really take it that seriously because it could be one of those things, you know, you have a really amazing idea. Will it really work or not? And so I, I just thought, you know, it sounds interesting. We'll see what happens in the future. Um, I didn't really have an opportunity to buy anything like that. So I sort of laughed it off. And then um, last year during Ramadan, I met with some friends and uh, a friend of mine was actually, you know, he held quite a few cryptocurrencies and he was telling me about Bitcoin and the value of Bitcoin okay. and I thought okay wow it's increased in, in value and actually more significantly there is use in it it's not just something that's come and it's going to disappear there so is actually... It's been about a year so far. Yes, Thank yes you. so and that's, no, no, that's, that's my <laughs> story. Ashraf, um, <laughs> no, we'll have more time to discuss it. Yeah. Ashraf what about yourself what's been your experience how long have you been involved? Yes yeah, so similar story um, I've got it actively, actively involved um, towards the back end of last year, so beginning of December. Um, so I'm by no means uh, classify myself as an expert. As I said, I don't think anyone w should be classified as an expert. It's really early stages. But when I was in university in 2011, I was, you know, r f fully involved in um, the space, what was going on. But as a student, I didn't have the capability to invest. My philosophy is only invest, or you know, you said trade, but I call it investing because I don't like to um, only invest what you're capable to lose. So if I'm willing to lose that, then fine. Otherwise, you shouldn't shouldn't be getting involved. So it's been about uh, just over a month. Just a um, but yeah, so it's, okay. it's been going all right. Great. And uh, Ustad Salman, um, from your experience, how is cryptocurrency or say uh, cryptocurrency trading different to say some of the more conventional trading like gold trading, buying stocks and shares? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> well, that, that's actually quite a complex question. Um, and if you don't mind, what I'd like to do is go back to basic principles of Sharia. Mm. I think the audience at home would really appreciate if we understand some of the basic principles of Sharia and of trade and what's allowed and what's not allowed and why it's not allowed. Mm. And then 
we can just sort of make, have, have a reasoned discussion about how those apply to cryptocurrency. Sure. Would, would, you, would you mind if I do yeah, that? Yeah, so what we'll do is, that's fine. Um, if we could, we'll, we'll break, we'll go into it. I guess um, in terms of just on the very basic level, right? in terms of, uh, you know, the fact that with gold trading and, you know, the more kind of conventional, this seems to be some, a, a very new kind of type of uh, investment, if, that, if that's mm -hmm. the right way to put yep. it. So how, what's, your kind of, what's your kind of take on that? Um, my, my initial impression is mm. that uh, cryptocurrency uh, has some similarities to existing currencies. Okay. Um, well, firstly, I'm using the word currency for want of a better word. I don't really know whether it is a currency, but um, we can have a discussion yeah, about that can, later. We can discuss but that. <clears throat> for whatever, whatever it is, it, it, it resembles some of the current times of pounds and dollars um, in the sense that it's a type of artificial currency. It's not a kilo of wheat or a pound of gold. Mm -hmm. It's a type of artificial currency. It's not issued by a government. It's created by a community of people. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so it's, the not, other, the, it's not your tangible, like the other... Yeah, um, like, like, like yeah, gold or silver tangible. or wheat or barley yeah, or, or yeah. dates or salt. You know, there's a hadith where the Prophet talks about exchanging mm -hmm, commodities yeah. in the market and the rules relating to them. It's not a tangible commodity. That's the first thing. Um, the other slight concern I have is it, it smacks of something called the tulip mania which uh, if, you, if you Google it, you'll find mm. a Wikipedia article on it. Sure. And in the 17th century in the, in, the, in, the, um, in the Dutch Kingdom, which was probably one of the most pro prosperous uh, nations at the time, there was a mania where people started selling tulip bulbs and speculating on the price of tulip bulbs. And people were selling tulip bulbs for 10 times the income of, a, of an average person. So if you think about that, a, a small tulip bulb, if you say the average income today is 25,000 pounds, you'd be selling a tulip bulb for £250,000. So, so Bitcoin hasn't, or, or, the, or the cryptocurrency sure. haven't reached that level yet. Sure. But that's what happens in, in a speculation bubble where people are buying something. It could be acorns, it could be anything. Mm. But they're buying it not because it has any use for them or they're using it as a currency to, to buy cornflakes or sure. buy a book or an airline ticket. They're buying it because there's a craze about it and they think more and more people will buy it. The demand for it will increase and it's a... It's a spiralling bubble. Sure, thank and you. so that, I have a concern about that. Okay, so we can uh, talk about that in a bit more detail uh, as the show progresses. Um, Mujibu, you've obviously this is something that you've been involved with for a year now. And in terms of your researching and trading or investing, how, how much of your time is it taken up? Um, it's, it's a hobby, really, that's sort of taken up. So every day, sort of half an hour becomes an hour, something like that. So it's just something, you know, what is this? Uh, where did it come from? So that research needs to happen because um, y if it's your hard-earned money that you've got and you're you know, potentially risking that and it is an investment and any investment has a risk associated with it. Mm -hmm. So in order for, you, for me to put that money aside, I have to look at what I'm you know, risking it for sure. and if balancing, managing the risk, is it worth that risk? Is it a bubble? Is it something that's uh, more valid? And so through the research, what I did find out is that uh, Crypto. Are you able to balance your family, what you're doing with the um, investment? It, it, it's, it's it's a hobby that takes over. Actually, it does, it's really yeah. it's a very it's it's something that you sort of like you look at the charts and things like that very often. So every so often, I'm looking at it. Um, I'm not sure if there's some psychology behind it. You know, you're looking at things and you're getting a dose of do uh, dopamine. I think okay. the, the chemical or something like that. But um, thank you for being it, honest. It's, it's, it's a, <laughs> but it's a, it's a, it's a hobby. It's something that you know, if you are interested in, it, I, I think it's something good. I don't see something uh, that it's it is wrong with it as such. Okay. Um, it's an investment. Any thank risk. You. If you're doing a business, you have to spend your time on it. You okay. can't really do things half-heartedly. If you do, then you're going to lose your money. So you. it's, 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 it's that balance, I think. Thank you. Ashraf, have you lost any friends since you started investing? <laughs> no, I've gained friends. You've gained um, friends. Digital so, friends. Yeah, digital friends, other friends, you know, other friends of mine. I think what's important is that we have a community. So, I mean, other Muslims as well uh, who have a similar mindset um, or interpretation of what um, digital currencies are. We've all come together and we've all um, invested together, obviously, our own investments. But having that support of, you know, what's going on, because as you said, things can change so quickly, mm. uh, which obviously is to do with the volatility in the market. Sure. But um, as you've seen... But what about you know, balancing it with, say, your other commitments? 
you know, yeah, no, your I work, mean, like, your family, again, I think your friends. This, it's almost like... No, I mean, it, 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 can, it, it can take over. But I think the important thing is here is to know your own um, psychology as well because my way, how I interpret myself investing or, or trading will be different to every other person. So um, being honest with yourself and having self-awareness, okay, you know, am I going to dedicate half an hour or am I doing my research? Am I truly only investing money that I can lose or am I investing more than I can lose and then I will be stressed out and be overcome by the pressures and checking the market every second of every day? Um, so for my case, no, obviously when I initially started, it requires that certain kind of sure. research, you, you know, to do it justice. But after that, you know, it, it's not necessarily the case. Sure. Well, Sad Salman, um, my question is linked to what I've asked uh, Mujibul and Ashraf. And I guess we're talking about online trading in general before we go into specifically uh, mm -hmm. cryptocurrency. That is there a danger there where people might lose sight of reality to a certain extent and mm -hmm. you know compromise some of their other commitments and other kind of uh, responsibilities because it, they just get engrossed into this? Um, it's possible. Um, th this can happen with any activity. If, if somebody gives disproportionate attention to one thing, could be with work. Some people are addicted to work. They, they spend all their time at work. When I used to work in a big law firm mm. and I saw many work addicts in the law firm. <laughs> These are the partners in the law firm. They'd be working till nine. You know, there was a partner there who, at nine o'clock every day, he'd get a call from his wife, and that was that was his time he'd spend with his family. And when the phone rang, he'd say, "Oh, it's my wife," as though it's it's, it's something he'd rather not have. So, um, I, 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 that may be a concern with anything. I, I wouldn't say that's the discussion we need to have in terms of mm -hmm. whether or not cryptocurrency or any form of currency is jaiz and sharia or not. Mm. I mean, the Balancing Act is, is, is a general moral responsibility on every man and woman, mm. balancing yeah. their responsibilities. Okay, thank you. Um, Mujibul, I'll come back to you. Um, how do you decide what to invest in? You have to, the way I've gone about it is, is research, finding out what it is, what's the technology behind it, um, who are the people involved, what's the plan, is there a real, real life use case those things because you could get carried away with these projects and in this industry uh, there are a lot of um, fake projects people who are very greedy they create things and they're essentially fraudsters so if you don't do your research um, you may potentially be investing in something that you're going to lose your money in just like any business i sure. mean you know in real life i've i've no friends who've come together you know, try to run a business, one person's run off with the money. In a similar way, it's, it's a virtual thing and it can happen. So, uh, and as there, there's famous things, there's this Ponzi scheme. So, for example, there's something called BitConnect. That was a Ponzi scheme. Sure. You know, people were talking about it. Lots of um, American courts were giving uh, cease and desist uh, uh, judgments. And then um, I eventually uh, they sort of uh, went yeah. bankrupt, if you sure. like. They're, they still exist, but okay. it's those kind of things that you have to be aware of. Thank you. Ashraf, some people claim that this is a, you know, you know what I'm going to say, it's a, you know, a, a quick buck, making a quick buck, that kind mm -hmm. of approach to business or investment. What's your, what's your take on that? I think anyone, if anyone asked that question to me, they would say, you know, that definitely is the wrong approach because um, like anything in life, nothing comes free or quick or that easily. Um, not even are, cryptocurrency? No, not even cryptocurrency. I mean, there are insane gains, of, as, as we've touched on. Um, you've seen something go from a few cent to, you know, uh, increase by a thousand percent, you know, in the same year. Um, but I think what's important is going, going back to the principles of why am I investing and being true to the intention of, of why you're doing something. Sure. Um, is, it, is it just to make a quick buck? Mm -hmm. um, then I would say maybe not. If you don't understand it, then I wouldn't say get involved. Okay. Do your own r research um, and understand w why you're doing it. Because if you put your money in, you have to be in it for the long haul. Because Bitcoin has grown exponentially, mm -hmm. but you know, again, it started in 2009. The first okay. few years, it was it was very slow. Um, so I, it, I would definitely say that's the wrong okay, approach. Thank you, but Sad Salman. Uh, carrying on from that, you know, what is the Islamic principle on trying to make a quick buck? Because I know Ashraf's presented his argument that it feels like, from you know, the conversations I've had, people are there to make a quick buck. You know, it's like it's uh, it's quite volatile. We can uh, it's it's gone down. We can make quite a lot of money really quick. What's the Islamic principle behind? behind having that kind of an attitude to this type of investment? Well, the, sh the Sharia doesn't prohibit a, p a person from looking at an opportunity to make some money. So, you know, in any market you have opportunities for what we call arbitrage, where you might find something cheaper in one place, you buy it and you go and sell it for more in another place, and you make a profit in between. And that's what shopkeepers do that. You buy a Mars bar for 50 pence, you sell it for 75, 75 pence, you make some, you make some profit. Um, the, 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 the issue here is that 
Um, what about people who say, you know, and I guess the next question is, you know, what's the difference between that and gambling? Because yeah, that's some what people, I was going to come to. Yeah. That's what I was going to come to. So uh, the, the, the word for gambling in Arabic is maysir, which actually comes from the, the root yusr, which is, you know, it's making a buck easily. Yeah. And so um, what happens is when, when, when a, a, something, whether it's a commodity or an artificial unit, becomes decoupled from reality and starts becoming exchanged and people start speculating on that and it, and it becomes a bit more like a casino. And this doesn't only happen in, uh, in artificial currencies, it can happen in real commodities when, you know, with the tulip I gave you, a tulip is a real thing, but the value of it became decoupled and, 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 and almost derivative, we call it a derivatives market, it became a derivative where people were exchanging it as a derivative. It becomes a bit like a casino and gambling and that's the concern I expressed at the beginning. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Um, as always, you know, we'd love to hear your views. So please, uh, whether you're involved with trading online or you're not, or you have an opinion, please get in touch. The numbers on the screen, um, and you know, we'd love to speak to you here in the studio. Afnara, so the next afnara view the next loya topic loya. Please afnara shori koi ba guroka number as screen on us. Majul, coming back to you, you know, um, have you? We, we've seen images of to coins and so forth, and obviously you've invested. Um, Talk to me about the kind of physical aspect of it. Have we? It's, it's a digital form. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. And there's right. no way of kind of converting it into a physical form. Um, it, the cryptocurrency itself is digital, um, but in, in order to get it, you have to use you, you have to buy it, buy it. So there are websites there, like Coinbase, for example, in the UK, where you can buy buy bitcoins and then they send it to you. That's how you receive it. That's one way of getting bitcoins. But do you get the? And we, I know we've touched upon that it's a digital currency. But yeah. can you get like a you know like you get a one pound coin? Could we get a bit? So a bitcoin? What, what it is is it comes on your. Uh, digital wallet if okay, you like so sure. for example on my phone I've got my digital wallet so I could look at it and it's there so it's 100% digital it's it's 100% okay. digital uh, you can actually print it out you know uh, for example Bitcoin you can put it on a paper form okay, um, so th there is a way that you can actually print it um, there are some people for example they'll put print their Bitcoin and put it on the wall Take so if anyone, yeah, <laughs> if anyone comes that's my Bitcoin have you done there. that much before? I haven't done that oh, yet, no. yet so um, but it I is, it is, it is di uh, digital um, what, what people do for security you can um, put it in hard wallets so they're like USB okay. kind of uh, storage facilities so Thank that you. you have that security and it's not going to get um, corrupted or uh, what's the word Hacked. Uh, hacked. Thank you. So, so there, there is that format, and I have used it in the in the form of um, uh, sending money across. So, for example, I needed to make a payment in Australia, a few hundred pounds, and I was able to do that you were able to within do that. within minutes. Um, okay. And so, I've I've done previously other payments to other countries, where the bank has cha uh, has charged twenty pounds. Mm. In addition to that, there's the currency uh, charges. But here, I used a form of cryptocurrency. Okay, um, it wasn't just Bitcoin. There are lots of other currencies. Sure, sure, so I've used sure. two or three forms. And within minutes, it's gone, gone mm -hmm. over with very minimal charge. So okay. this is where the technology and the real life case that I see, which I believe in, and is the future. That's, that's what, what has uh, taken me into this uh, industry. Okay. Thank you. Um, Ashraf, coming back to you. Um, you've got companies who are now accepting Bitcoin. And um, from your experiences, are there people who are actually uh, giving cash to others and they're transferring the Bitcoin? When you say giving cash to others, I mean trading to, to, the actual to, to, to trade, yeah. yeah so yeah. say for example, like someone said, like, look, I'm selling a Bitcoin and I'll, uh, you know, if you can pay me X amount or I'm selling another cryptocurrency mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll, I'll happily exchange that yeah, for yeah, a cash I mean, amount. Is that happening? Yeah, yeah, there's a massive, massive community. I mean, so if you just look at the, the market cap of the whole industry, it was before we've had a pullback just recently, but it was reaching up to a trillion. I mean, the, the amount of money flowing into this mm -hmm. uh, market is insane. Um, so you have, as, as you've touched on, there's Coinbase, there's other markets um, whereby you can buy Bitcoin or Ethereum or the, the basically the top three um, digital currencies by market cap. But then from, from there, you basically ent enter the, you know, the realm of cryptocurrencies. You transfer the um, Bitcoin or Ethereum to other exchanges, like a popular one is called Binance, which is you know, in, in, run in Asia. And from there you get you know, exposed to all the other cryptocurrencies you know, which you can buy, which is tr traded against Bitcoin or Ethereum. Okay. And from there, you know, or pre before those even existed, people were trading on Craigslist or on the internet, on you know, this, you know, they publicized that they've got X amount of Bitcoin and this is the price they're going for. But now it's somewhat more controlled, sure. although not regulated. Okay, thank you. Um, so Simon, how important is physical transaction in trading and mm -hmm. you know I guess I'm talking about stuff like gold silver even with this you know how how do we 
how do we kind of uh, discuss this in terms of physical transaction? Mm. Yeah, and this, this goes back to the, the basic principle. So the basic principle in Sharia is freedom of contract. It's hurriya to ta'amul, we say in Arabic. So the principle is you can do what you like. Um, and the objective of the Sharia is to create a fair and even playing, level playing field so that there's fairness that people don't defraud each other in the market and there isn't manipulation and monopolization. Um, <coughs> so there are certain prohibitions in Sharia, that's the things you can't do, which are designed to protect the market from some people uh, consuming other people's wealth without right. So we call it aklu amwali nasi bil batil. Yeah? So taking other people's wealth without right. One of, the, one of the key prohibitions in Sharia, and it goes back to the hadith of the Prophet, وسلم, which is Nahaan Bay'il Gharar. He prohibited the selling of gharar. Now, gharar has several meanings and several different applications. One of those is the selling of risk. So like an insurance, com insurance contract, you pay an insurance company to take your risk. So that, that's prohibited. And there are other types of takaful or Islamic insurance, which are based on mutual structures. That's different. Um, one of the meanings of bayl gharar is, according to the vast majority of, of scholars, is the prohibition of bayl al-ma'doom, which is you are not allowed to sell something that doesn't exist. Yeah. So let me give you a quick example. Suppose you buy my car and you pay me for my car and I say, right, my car's in the garage and I give you a receipt saying you now owe my, own, own my car. And I give you that receipt then that receipt gives you title to my car. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that receipt. But if I create nine more receipts, each for my one car, right? <laughs> I've created 10 receipts for mm -hmm. one car. So, that, so nine of those receipts are actually fraudulent. They don't actually represent a real car, right? But then if I then start trading those receipts and buying and selling them in the marketplace, what I'm doing is I'm actually committing an act of fraud. I mean, the audience at home will, will say, well, that's fraudulent, right? What I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm trading, I'm selling something that doesn't exist. All right. And if we look at uh, what currencies were in the past, in the past currencies were free. People could create money or wealth in the economy through their work. You could uh, dig up salt, you could build uh, a chair if you're a carpenter and you, you exchange those things and you have a medium of exchange which is usually something fungible. So people used to exchange it using gold or silver or salt. I mean the word salary in English comes mm -hmm. from the word salt because people used to pay each other with salt. Right? Because salt is a fungible commodity, you can have a kilo of salt, sure. it's same as another kilo of salt. So um, that's when you have freedom of the marketplace. But when somebody monopolizes that currency and says, right, I can designate value by getting a piece of paper or any artificial unit and saying, this piece of paper is worth 10 Mars bars and that one's worth 20 and that one's worth 40, like the way we have pounds and dollars today, the government designates value to pieces of paper, right? That creates artificial currency, what we call um, fiat currency, right? Essentially, in principle, that, that violates a basic principle of Sharia, which is selling something that doesn't exist. Okay. Yeah? And, and the, the process of issuing the artificial currency actually robs people of their existing wealth. So if there were £100 in the, in, in the economy between, say, the four of us, and somebody issues more of that, then what happens is there's more of those notes chasing the same amount of goods and commodities. Sure. So you. everybody's wealth is diluted, and some people, the people who issue that money, benefit from the simple fact that they've issued it and they've so, they, they surreptitiously and with stealth steal people's wealth. So Mr. Salman, we'll carry on with that discussion. We're going to go for a short break. Stay with us. When we come back, we'll look at cryptocurrency more specifically and some of the risks associated with it. Thank you.